Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. I want to thank Walter and Whitney for taking my place yesterday. I was out of town on a loss of a friend and all. I'll tell you all about that later. But we'll get started today with our weather brought to us by Haney Tactical Center at the corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. Everybody check them out for all kind of educational endeavors you may want to pursue. Now listen, it's going to be only a high of 8 to 9, but interesting thing, I'll check on my record. They're saying low tonight may be 6 to 9. That'll be the first time it hit the 60s since way back in last May. So that's a little cooler nights is something we welcome. All right, now let's take a look at our river readings. The river readings are interesting because they have gotten down to what the old timers, I keep using this phrase, it says the river's getting right. And I've heard some good reports from there. Now, it, you're looking at a, on Apalachicola at a 5.9, and all the way on through the weekend, it's going to be around between 5 and 6 foot for the weekend. Now, that's Apalachicola. Let's look at the Choctahatchee. Same situation here. It's reading a 5.2. Not a big flow to it. I mean, just really, uh, it's not going to drop in or not, not rising is just going to stay steady the rest of uh, the week uh, next three or four days matter of fact so that takes care of our river readings now our water temperature remains in the gulf at 85 degrees so that's a good steady sign right there been some good reports of king mackerel and i'm collecting some pictures i'm going to show you either tomorrow or the next day some pictures of some nice fish people have caught now take a look at our tide chart brought to us by kent forest lawn funeral home and cemeteries and uh they're right down here on 23rd street and their motto is, when carrying counts. Today is September the 18th, a Wednesday, and look what we have, folks. In the next three or four days, we're into some, what we call, neap tides. Not a lot of tidal flow, not a lot of movement going on. So it's just something where we'll work our way through. And I've had some good reports of people catching uh, good fish during neap tides. You just don't have a lot of tidal flow in certain areas. All right, that takes care of weather. The marine forecast be east-northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. All right, let's check our first break and we'll be right back. All right, folks, welcome back and welcome to my special guest this morning, Bob Stapleton. Good morning. Good, good to morning. be back. Divers in. Bob always brings in a lot of good stuff and it's interesting to have him. And uh, So let's get started. What's been going on, Bob? Well, it's, it's jumping now. Things we're, are we're, going great. We're, we're booking a lot of trips because mm -hmm. finally the rain quit. The water's clear. I think the fishermen don't know that because you go out there and that uh, the outflow still is coming in, I think, from the rains that we've had. Yeah. And it's on the surface, but it's in about the top 10 or 15 feet. And when you get below that, it breaks out to nice visibility. We've yeah. had better, but really good. I mean, yeah. 30, 40 feet viz is common, and that that's good for here. You can, you'll can you be able to see. I brought in some recent videos that I've done. Good. So it's improving. It's improving. Yeah. And it's... If you go out around, oh, 10 miles or less, you cross even over that. The, that fresh water is lighter than the soft water, so it floats yeah. on the top. And when you cross the tide line, uh, it's, it's pretty water out there. I've seen, of course, flying fish out there is, uh, when the good water comes in. I've seen ballyhoo out there, too, yeah. I mean, which is kind of unusual for up here, I think. Yeah. Uh, but uh, doing some uh, good dive training, having, getting new divers certified, and one thing that people come into the shop and ask about, and maybe people that watch this would want to know, well, I'd just like to try it out, maybe not mm -hmm. take the whole course. Well, you can. I mean, you can come in in a one-day deal. You can come in, watch a video on diving, uh, the equipment, I mean, things you'll need to know to uh -huh. dive. Go with an instructor or a dive master to some confined water like at the jetties yeah. in shallow water, a swimming pool at the spring, somewhere where you're not going to where you can be kept from going too deep by hitting the bottom mm -hmm. and get to experience scuba diving and put on the gear and spend time in the water breathing on scuba gear see if you like it some people think well maybe I'm claustrophobic well maybe you are maybe you aren't gonna like it so uh, this is how you can find out okay all right uh, well, it's a good experience well, you brought something this morning interesting and uh, we talk about it seeing on the water with light and everything and you got some flash well here, I brought right? these in because yeah the uh, okay well uh, lights have changed I mean it used to be old plastic flashlight was uh, 
uh -huh. just fine. Let me see if I can get yeah, this yeah, where it's got a good there background. There, go. there we go. This uh, heavy duty. Heavy duty flashlights now. I mean, they're almost all metal. Uh, they're pretty much bulletproof. Uh, they're waterproof, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them down to great depths, much greater than they need to be for scuba divers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking sportsmen might like these lights because they're what, pretty in a tree stand. Yeah, in a tree stand or with your gear thing. if you drop it, if it bangs against something, it's not going to hurt yeah. it. And they are that. so bright. And lots of different models. They can You can focus some of them. They have switches on the front, switches on the back. Uh, some of them you can turn yeah. the front of it and focus it. Yeah. Different sizes for different battery capacities. Um, that is bright. Yeah. Can y'all see some, that? Some of, yeah, and they, these are <laughs> ones that have been on display that, uh, and yeah. You know, for you, they have tubes on some of them that are small enough you can mount them on a Pictini rail, or uh -huh. you know, if you wanted to put them on a crossbow or a gun or something that's a little bigger, like the old police flashlight. And there are multiple powers you can yeah. turn it on so it's very yeah. bright, or hit it again and it dims down some. Uh, the one I carry, I meant to bring it, and I forgot to bring it. It has a, it's you can do spot or floodlight with it, which is handy sometimes if I'm videoing and I want to use it like at night for close-up things, I can mm -hmm. use it as a floodlight, or if you're looking precisely, you can use it as a spotlight. Uh -huh. So there, and, and it has a switch where it, it starts flashing SOS. <laughs> I, I don't plan on using that switch, but <laughs> there was a, some people recently that needed that switch. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, let's take a quick break on the video. We'll come back and show you. All right, welcome back. Sitting here with Bob Stapleton of Divers Den, and you brought us some good videos, always. Well, I brought some recent video. Okay. I, I have in my archives enough video to keep you going for a long time, but I thought it'd be more uh, interesting if it's what's out well, there. Well, right I'll keep now. that in mind if a hurricane season hits or something. We're just going <laughs> yeah, we can go days. back and. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, so let's let's uh, talk about this one. Okay, uh, bait. I mean, obviously the fish are going to be out there because there are lots of bait. That's just wow. Those are tom tates or grunts, people call them. Grouper like to eat them. There must be some grouper around there somewhere feeding on them. Wow, that's a thick. That's, yeah, that's thick like that. This is on, uh, let's see, that's on the bridge pan. Of course, you don't want to drop your bait down in there because you dropped right through the top of a bridge pan to get to them. Uh, you saw a small jack swim by. I hadn't seen many legal jacks on the inshore stuff. Here's one of our regular divers, Dave. He's, he's down. You'll see he he roots around in the hiding places where he, other people don't come up with lobster, but he does sometimes, and that's how he gets them. You got to look where they live. You can't just expect them to be walking around. Now, this he found this uh, octopus while he was rooting around down there and showed me where it was, so I went over and videoed it. They are fun to play with. <laughs> I mean, people overlook them. You can find a pile of shells or something on the bottom. I know where they are when you see that pile of shells out there where they've been feeding. and. Uh, they, they're hidden in their hole, but if you put your hand down there, they're curious. They want to see what you're all about. If you just leave it alone, I waited a few minutes before I started video until he came out. So he's grabbed my glove. He's, <laughs> he thinks he wants some of that. <laughs> it's amazing how strong they are. You can't, well, I won't say you can't pull them out. It would hurt them, I think, if you did, because they hold on tight right. with their, some of their legs and the other. See, he got away from me there. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I had a couple of grouper on my stringer there. I told you there were some out there. <laughs> not a lot, not a lot. Oh, y'all not seeing a lot of y'all just not seeing a lot of groupers. And went down to the west of the reefs the other day, where I was hoping to see some. Very few. Didn't get any gags. Got a couple of nice red grouper, but uh, I, I don't know where they are. They're around somewhere. Yeah. They're where the bait are. There's uh, another spear fisherman floating along there. Another wide shot on one of the uh, bridge spans out there, just showing how it's teeming with bait. This, I want to find a marine biology student that needs a master's or a doctoral thesis or something to do a study of three feet of one of the tops of these bridge spans. Uh -huh. th as you can see, those sponges there, uh, they're multicolored sponges of different varieties. Those lumps all along there that you see, and those are all clams. 
I mean, I, don't, I hate to say this, but you could probably take a shovel, scoop them off, and have some really good <laughs> clam chowder. I mean, I'm sure they would have a food value. Fortunately, you can see fishing line everywhere. Of course, that fishing line doesn't, doesn't rot away or anything. That's a soap fish. My wife thinks they're pretty cute. Kind of a sad sack face to them when you look at them. It looks like he's looking for Nemo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the little cocoa damsels, they're real pretty. I mean, people that are diving need to stop and take time to look at these things close up. I mean, I, I'm out there looking at divers, watching them swim around, and they're swimming, swimming, swimming. I mean, you need to stop. I mean, you see a lot more when you're well, not. Well, I, I guess on land you say stop and smell the roses. Uh -huh. like Underwater they say stop and look. Stop and watch. Yeah, uh -huh. Stop and look closely. That's a whole other world, isn't it? It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It really is. And you see things you know, like there's a little goby down in the sponge. See him peeking out there? I mean, <laughs> a little eyebrowed goby. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I must have right. shot a couple of so, barracudas. So what is that right there? <laughs> That's some sharp-nosed grouper. Oh, yeah, the barracudas. <laughs> and I had my still camera with me. and took, Again, you almost can't take a picture out without get, out getting a little bit of fishing line in the picture. There's another one of the eyebrow or seaweed goby. Uh, oh, yeah. Another one. That's they hide down in those barnacles, you know, the dead barnacles. And now, what are those called? They're gobies. Gobies, okay. Mm -hmm. gobies. You can put your finger down there, and they are very. Here, Carlos and I went out the other day to retrieve an anchor that somebody had called into the shop and said they'd lost their anchor, and we thought we'd go get it. Very unusual, but you can see the dolphin in the background. That dolphin and then its, its buddy came and followed us down the anchor line. How deep were we all? Uh, we were out on one of the offshore wrecks. It was about 100 feet to the bottom, I mean, there was no issue for the dolphin getting down there. <laughs> you can see us working our way down, or me working my way, there's the second one coming in, working our way down the anchor line. Yeah. Right, well, how did he get, how did he lose it right there? What? Do what? Oh, I, I find them all the time. You drop your anchor in the wreck, you're not gonna, might not get it back. Because <laughs> it can get tangled up so there's no way you'll pull it loose from the boat. You just yeah. have to, this was, kind of, this is me. I, I get, don't get much video of myself diving. This is a CUDA. Unfortunately, I didn't get the shot. I made a good shot on it. I shot it through the gill plate. The big ones, I shoot through the gill plates because you can see that uh, Goliath grouper down below me there. He's curious, looking and seeing what's going on. But this one, I just couldn't get enough killing on him. I string him up, and then I take my spear point out, and I'm working on getting the spear point out now. And he's kicking around. Yeah, I mean, this still. goes on and on. I. I know, normally I'm pretty efficient at it, but this one just gave me trouble. I was I watch it because I laugh at myself messing with it. You can see it's a good sized fish. See, I got my spear out. I'm okay now, so no problem. And now look out. at this. I, he he goes crazy. He decides he he wants to get away. He's he wants to pull you around on. Yeah, he's yanking me all around. I thought eh, you need a little more killing. I take my knife and um, stick it in their brain. And yeah, I see some funny things out there with spear fishermen trying to kill their fish. I mean, I don't want to be around them. They get the knife out and they're slashing and stabbing. <laughs> and I think, oh my gosh, you're going to hurt yourself. And some people have. I mean, they stab themselves in the hand, in the knee. <laughs> I mean, it's... Well, luckily you got a thing tied to you. There's your gun. Yeah, guy. yeah, there's my gun. And <laughs> it's that's that's my new Koa. That's, okay. it, that is a great shooting gun. They have well, those, did you have much uh, blood coming out here? Oh, you can see the... This is about when the sharks normally come around. I was going to say. Oh, I'm, yeah, if you can see, it's just pouring blood. The reason you don't see any red is because it isn't red when it comes out as uh -huh. green. Yeah, and that's you and then with my gun unloaded and no no defense whatsoever, the uh -oh. sharks come around and start snooping and saying they want that fish instead of me and I have to poke at them and mess with them to keep the fish. Have your shark sightings uh, still high like Yeah, you seeing a lot of sharks. A lot of sharks. And I know, I hope people aren't frightened by that because if you're scuba diving, if you don't drag bloody dead fish in front of their noses, they're not going to bother you. I mean, they're never a threat. Yeah. I mean, they'll swim by, but they don't come up and threaten you in any way. Uh, obviously, we're not a food source for them with all those bubbles and metal and everything else around us. We don't look very fishy, really. Well, I don't know. I worry about my legs hanging down there. No, you're good. <laughs> uh, they, they aren't going to mess with you. I'm telling you. All right. 
what we have yeah, here. Here we're moving on. Oh, this is uh, my Tyndall dive flight. We went out and dove the Red Sea, and just a little more video of what you could see if you scuba dive here. I could bring in some yeah. video of some of the Caribbean areas, but if I had to dive only in one area of the world, I think it'd still be Panama City. It's they're prettier fish and better color on the shallow reefs and the southern climates. But uh -huh. as far as diversity of dive sites and big fish, well, I guess I'm kind of prejudiced because I spearfish, but there's a black snapper moving across there in front of you. Plenty of the Tom Tates. Oops, something must have got after them. Something spooked them. Yeah, something spooked them. You can yeah, actually hear them so sometimes. So this is the Red Sea here. Yeah, that's the shipwreck, the Red Sea. It's one that the Tourist Development Council and many others helped prepare and carry out and yeah. uh, put out there. It's a very popular dive site and a good place to uh, probably flatline over the top of it for mackerel around it. Uh, so it's pretty popular, so you probably... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the, there are a few dives. The dive boats, we try to stick to you know, the same dive sites over and over again to free up the other ones for fishermen. Now, if uh -huh. customers say, oh, I've seen that so many times, I want to see something else, that's fine. We'll take them to a different place. But the Red Sea, the Strength, Bridge Span 12 and 1 on the east side, and then on the west side, the BART, the Jeff, and 14. I mean, we just go there time and again, and it's never boring to me to keep diving them. But we're always willing to accommodate divers they want if they've been here several times and have seen all those we can take them to other places like to the tarpon or offshore to the okay. chickasaw or chippewa or putnam or any place okay yeah. uh i will start wrapping it up now what's his last couple of shots here oh that's people hamming it up for the camera there's frank with his uh, contour video camera that he got from divers den okay. taking some video that's just beautiful. You think you're down there around the Bahamas or something, Caribbean? Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's the visib. Like I said, this was just a week or two ago, and the visibility has been very good. Well, I appreciate you bringing a good recent video too. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and we'll run this on out, and uh, we'll get ready to take our break, and then we'll be back for our final segment here on Panhandle Outdoors. <laughs> Hi, right, welcome back. Sitting here with Bob Stapleton from Divers Den here locally in Panama City. So run by and check them out. But right now, let's check out our fishing game time for today, brought to us by Mark Cowart of Edgewater Beach Realty. Today, we only have one time. And right here in the middle of the day, we're looking at 11.54 to 1.54. Right there in the middle of today. So you can take a two-hour lunch and uh, see some wildlife, wildlife activity going on at that point in time. That's about the time our divers get in the water for their second dive. Well, so, they're going to uh, be. That'll be. And normally they'll take two dives on a trip. Normally, normally yeah. we'll uh, leave the dock at about nine o'clock in the morning and uh, get out and do a couple of dives and be back by one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and how long do they rest in between? Hour. Oh. Yeah, we give them an hour. If you're diving uh, air, it's better to off gas your nitrogen build up for yeah. an hour and Very then good. get back in. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll check them out there. Tell me you saw them on Panhandle Outdoors. <laughs> Listen, uh, let's talk about flounder a minute because, uh, you know, y'all get to see them first. I minute. know. And we we, we have the excited. story on whether so the flounder are here or not. This is like a scouting report on flounder, <laughs> okay? So. I, there, I hadn't seen many lately on the inshore wrecks except we went on one place, I won't name the exact site, down to the west mm -hmm. uh, off Fontainebleau, and one of the divers came up with a nice stringer of flounder. So it probably isn't going to be much longer before they start scattered moving that. Right They're now. scattered right now. Yeah. yeah. Usually yeah. at what time of the year are y'all sort of getting hooked up? October, with late October on through the winter. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll start. People yeah. say they move out of the bay. I can't believe there's that many flounder in the bay. I mean, I think they move in to their breeding grounds, which are inshore. I think they come from offshore and from out of the bay. So that's not coming from two spots. I think, we, so. That's, I I, think so. We're talking about a marine biologist, but I want to find that out too, because I'm beginning to think the same thing, because so many people are reporting flounder coming from I all was over. down at the docks one day, and longliners came in, and they had baskets of flounder. Mm -hmm. And I said, my goodness, where did you get that? 600 feet of water. There are flounder everywhere, yeah. and they move in, I believe, to, yeah. to breed. And that's what they're doing when we're Unfortunately, yeah. when we're killing them out there. Uh, real quick, Bob, we almost had a you know a diving. Uh, I talked to one before, of the so. individuals that okay. was involved with that, and it was a very good story. They're very fit people. They're experienced divers, but 
uh, I think a little more experience would have helped. The current was really strong. I dove the same day. I was, in fact, I was diving to a site that was very close to where they were, and there was a very strong current running. Mm -hmm. But there are things that, with experience, you learn to look at. Before I ever get in the water, I look at the bubbles going past the boat. I know how strong the current is mm -hmm. before I splash. Mm -hmm. If I need a line up to the front of the boat to pull myself up to the anchor line, I know before I get in the water and say, oh my gosh, what do I want to do now? I hook up a line to the mm -hmm. front of the boat and then can pull against it. If you get down to the bottom and you can't see the wreck from where your anchor is, you better go back up and reset your anchor. Mm -hmm. They decided, I think I'll go find it. <laughs> and they okay. didn't. And they stopped on the way up as following good safety procedures. It's not required, but it's recommended to take a three-minute safety stop at 15 feet. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're diving in shallow water, it's you're not going to hurt yourself if you skip that, mm -hmm. shallow water being 60, 70 feet. Well, they did the three-minute safety stop. When they came up, they were yards behind the boat, could not swim against the current to get to it. And, and the current was that strong? It, it was a strong current, yeah. it, very unusual. But, we had about three days of a real strong current, yeah. and very unusual. It was more than a tidal current. Yeah. It was uh, some kind of ocean current that was sweeping through here. Right. Anyway, that, that was it for them. They floated around. They kept their spirits up. They did fine. Um, most of them had uh, enough suit on that they were comfortable. Uh, the girl that was with them, she was lightly clad and got a little cold, but mm -hmm. not dangerously hypothermic. Okay. And uh, it was, they were in the water for 14 hours. It was about midnight when the Coast Guard yeah, helicopter we, found we, them. Yeah, we all heard the story and yeah. just glad it came to a It, came out, good it so. came out to a very good ending, but I'm sure there were some doubts in their mind as they're floating out there for that amount of time. Oh, yeah. And speaking of ending, we're going to start ending this thing. It's always great to have you come on the show. Well, good, good to be, be here. Though. Appreciate it. Well, I see you at Divers Den, folks. And as always, we appreciate you watching Panhandle Outdoors. This is America's only daily outdoor TV show. We're proud of it, proud of our viewership. You do something good for somebody today. Again, thank you, Walter and Whitney, for taking me yesterday. God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.